Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Everything OneNote. I'm Andy Batiste, and today I'm gonna to go through and show you my top tips for creating interactive OneNote pages. All right, let's get straight into it, but today, don't forget, if you like the content Richie and I put out, don't forget to like and subscribe, and hit that little bell button so you're gonna get notified every time we bring out new content. Creating interactive OneNote pages. So this is something that I like to challenge myself to do a lot, is trying to find different ways I can make my pages more engaging, more interactive, more interesting for the students in how they're actually working or answering questions. So my first one is incorporating tags or the to-do list. I like to use it as one, obviously a to-do list. You can create things that students can then just tick off as they're going, but you can also use it as a select tool or a bit of a multi-choice style question. So this is an example where the students had to identify what dinosaur they were using. And they had to select the classification for that dinosaur. To find to find opportunities where your students can click on things. So number two is trying to incorporate drag and drop activities. Being able to get the students to physically pick up an image or an object on your page and move it into another image or object on your page. In this example, we're asking the students to fill a jar with $2.70. So these are all just images we've taken from Google and they can just pick it up and they can drag it into the jar. They can pick up a 50 cent coin. And a 20 cent coin and we then have $2.70 in our jar. So anything where you get the students to drop and drag words or images into different places is far more interactive. Number three is using the draw tools. The students are dragging from one dot over to the next dot and then the same in this example here. Another way you could obviously do this same activity is using the draw tool but actually drawing in the shape. Finding opportunities for the students to use that draw tool is a little bit more fun than typing. Number three is embedding audio. Podcasts or an MP3 or a song that you want to put in there. For example, this is an episode of a podcast where they're talking about credit card debt. Again, anything that the kids can click on and stop and, and listen to and go back and click on it again is far more interactive. The other example is just inserting your own audios. Alright guys, I'm just going to explain question one for you. So where you are, it could be explaining a question, could be explaining a concept. Anything where the students are able to click and listen to something is going to be interactive. And my last tip, and probably the best one, is embedding. There are so many things that you can embed in OneNote. I have a bit of a list over here on the left. We're going to go through a few of them, but I'm not going to go through all of them. The first one we talk about is obviously the Microsoft Office Suite. PowerPoint, Forms, Word and Sway can all be embedded. You can see this is an example of a form I have here. I've shrunk it down a little bit, but then you can you see I'm able to scroll through that. I can select my answer. It's a bit of a um, choose your own adventure, this form. So I can go through, click on question two, have a read through, create the next one. So you go, and obviously it goes on and on and on. Just being able to embed a form on your page is a lot more interactive than just putting a link to the form. You're keeping the students in OneNote, which I guess the whole point of embedding really is, is you're trying to keep the students in OneNote, trying to keep them in the one place, keep them away from distractions. The next one we talk about is Giphy. Now, it can just be a bit of fun, but Giphy also have a few interesting Giphys that are factual and have some key information, could be specific to what you're learning about. For example, I often teach personal finance and we talk about credit cards, so I often put this one in and around that page. Very simple to embed, it's just a matter of simply going to Giphy.com, finding the Giphy you actually want, hitting that share button, copy the link, Heading back to your OneNote page, paste it in, and then that Giphy is then going to embed on the page. You do have to hit play every time, reload that page, but you know the kids get the fun of again the interactivity of being able to click on that image and see that image just continually loop over and over on your page is far more engaging and interactive than just a still image. And the next one I'm going to talk about is Quizlet. So Quizlet obviously is a website where you can create your key sets of terms for a unit or a topic or subject and create some, it automatically creates some games that the students can go in and study. But being able to embed this straight into OneNote is really, really cool because it embeds almost the same experience you get on the website. It's a matter of going to the website, copying and pasting your URL, heading back to OneNote and pasting it, and then that's going to embed in there below. And then simply drag that to the size that you want. 
but it's pretty cool. It gives you, obviously they can click through the flashcards, they can choose a study mode if they wanna go into the matching, things like this, all right? So the students have that opportunity to really go in or if they have any spare time, you don't have to send them off to Quizlet or website, they can go to that certain page and you wanna and just revise and just go over those key terms and play some of those fun games. Next one is Desmos, and this is something that I guess is gonna be more used for your mathematics style subjects. But this is an example of a parabola, but you can embed this straight into OneNote. And again, let's head over to our parabolas. Copying and pasting that link, there's a whole variety of different options you have over here with trigonometry. Creating it, and then obviously you get the same experience embedding that into your OneNote, and you can tweak all of these little things to make it slightly different and then you can you know zoom in and zoom out and have a bit of a look get rid of that little sidebar yeah, a really cool and interactive way to create um, parabolas and some of those different activities you have mathematics related the next one is spotify and this is one that i only recently learned so you can actually embed a song into onenote you can embed a whole playlist into onenote now it will play in your onenote as well it doesn't give you the full song, it just gives you, I guess, a bit of a preview of that song, but you can go through and click on all of the other songs and play them through. Um, but another cool one is, obviously, Spotify has a lot of podcasts and things. So there's this really interesting podcast on Microsoft Education by a couple of guys that is really passionate about this sort of stuff. But you see the difference of the song, it will play the full podcast. So. The students can, anything that's relevant to what you're talking about, something that students can click on, they can listen to, they can pause, rewind, come back to it. Maybe you're teaching, teaching psychology and you wanna put a bit of Tony Robbins on, the students can click on and play, and again, super interactive and a really cool way to add another layer or another level of engagement into your pages. And for Spotify, same as the others, it's just a matter of copying and pasting the link. So hitting the three dots, sharing, copying the album link, and then pasting that straight into your OneNote page. The next one is a website called Sketchfab. So they create some 3D models and some visual videos and things like this. So you can see this is an example of a body weight push-up. Um, and you can see it gives a nice looping video in embeds, but it's also fully interactive. I can move that around. I can move it upside down. I can get a whole different array of angles right there on the page. The website Sketchfab, there's a whole different array of things out there. So go and have a look and see if there's anything relevant to what you're teaching or talking about. A matter of copying and pasting that URL back to our OneNote and watching that load and then resizing. Give it a play. And the last one I'm gonna talk about is ThinkLink. Now this one is really, really cool. So I guess being able to not just put an image of the Amazon rainforest here, but you can see we have a 360 image of the Amazon rainforest. It does automatically move and start playing, but the students and yourself have the interactivity of being able to click that and they can drag it up. They can look at whatever it is up in the canopies. They can look down on the ground. They can turn around behind them. So fully interactable, so much cooler than just putting a still image in there. Uh, if you're studying the Amazon or it could be volcanoes in Antarctica, same experience, very, very cool. Being able to sit, click on it, have a play around, and the students can just they have their own free will to go where they want with that image. Another cool website, again, where you can find lots of different stuff in there. So go in and have a look at ThinkLink. And if you want to learn a bit more about embedding, Mike Tholson does have a video that gives you an ultimate guide to embedding. But if you want to add a bit more engagement into your pages with some of these tips on how to create a bit more interactive view. Thanks for watching. Ciao. Thank you.